Hello, everybody. I grunted into the microphone on accident. <laughs> that's, that's how you know you're out of shape. Are we live? Yeah, we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pints with Aquinas. My name's Matt Frad. That over there is Thursday. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> um, Welcome back from France. Yeah, it's good to be back. I want to begin by uh, sharing that story about when you picked me up the other night with my son, Liam. Wait, and what did I do? <laughs> from the airport. And we were driving home and I missed the exit and drove. Oh, yeah. yeah, 30 yeah, yeah. Minutes. Apparently neither of us noticed. <laughs> and then we found out and we turned around. And you remember we were driving back and we saw a possum. Oh, yes. Right in front of the car. And in a, in like a fraction of a second, I think you went, oh, and I went, yep. <laughs> and I hit it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boom. I don't think Liam even noticed. No, no, no. So I saw it and went, oh, yep. Because I realized that it was too late. And then I heard, <laughs> and then as simultaneous with, boom, you went, yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, thanks for getting me. Yeah, we killed a possum. Yep. It is funny too because we weren't aiming for it. It was just there it was and there was no <laughs> chance of We were we were going like it. 65 on the highway. You were not avoiding that possum. Yeah. It was funny we got lost too because I drank a bunch of coffee and caffeine late so that I could be awake and alert. And then you decided to drive back from the airport jet lagged and missed the exit. <laughs> well, you know why I did that? It's because the very first time you ever picked me up from an airport, do you remember? You went like oh, this weird way. I was so, we were so lost. I was so lost. Like, where did, why aren't you using Google Maps? You're like, I'm trying to be one of these cool Gen Z people who isn't relying on my phone. Yeah. Which is admirable, but I but was I so jet lagged. you it was and annoying. your entire family lost. <laughs> I think that's why I might just give me the keys. <laughs> um, all right. So the, this is what happened yesterday. I was sitting in the cigar lounge and Ryan says, hey, Matt, you know who you look like? That is an awful impression of Ryan. Sorry, Ryan. Um, OK, you have to understand for the last 10 years when people have said, hey, Matt, you know what you look like? You know who they've said? This guy. Chris Martin from Coldplay. And I put it on screen right <clears> on <throat> here. So and, you know, people would I, I don't know if I do or not or did. But when they would say that, I'm like, that's cool. Like, he's a rock star. Like, I guess I could, could could do worse. So yesterday, he's like, hey, Matt, you know who you look like? And I'm like, I know, Chris Martin. But he didn't say Chris Martin. He, he said, said this Rand guy. Paul. Which, you know, good. Not making fun of Rand Paul, but he's not a rock star. I am. He looks like a melting <laughs> ice cream cone if it was a person. Oh, that's what I look like now. Age <laughs> will come for you too, Thursday. But this I'm not is, making fun of you. I'm making fun of Rand Paul. This is the joy of getting older. Well, no, you just we you just said apparently. I didn't agree that you okay. look like Rand Paul. All right. You know how long I spent trying to find a picture for this thumbnail <laughs> where Rand Paul and you guys look remotely alike? <laughs> I think it's because my hair wasn't pushed back. I haven't. Yeah, cut the it. curls make it. More the obvious. curls get the girls. That's what my mom used to say to me. I used Did to be embarrassed really? about having curls. I hated that I had curls. I had friends who had thick, lush hair with a part down the middle. This was really cool in the late 80s, early 90s, I think, with the kind of bowl cut. And I always tried to do it, but I couldn't because my hair was thin and crinkly. Um, and so I felt bad about myself. And my mum would say, Matt, curls get the girls. And they never did until I finally got married. I had to use my accent to win anybody over. No one else wanted it. Well, not in Australia. There's there are a dime a dozen there. What's that? The accent? Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. No one ca cared. It was only when I came to America and hammed it up. Get out there, hey, Alan. That's probably. How Did I you see that video I sent you of the uh, things bogans never say? Yeah, that was hilarious. That was really funny. A bogan is an Australian redneck for people who that's are right. not aware. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So I just got back from France. It was great. Kind of. It was fine. So. We led a pilgrimage on the River Sin, and there was about 60 pilgrims who came with Cameron and myself, and we had a really nice time, and everyone there was fantastic. Like, these people were terrific. I'm not just saying that because I'm afraid they're watching. They really were great. And we had a good time. But, you know, I, I want to be the kind of person who can enjoy all this stuff, but I just don't like it. And I, But I thought I was put on a good face, and at the end, the very last night, more than one person came up to me and went, congrats, dude, you survived. I'm like... I thought I was putting out good vibes, like I was enjoying it, but apparently I wasn't. I thought I was putting out good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do you look like Rand Paul, 
You sound like this. <laughs> I'm drinking Diet Pepsi, by the way. They don't have Diet Coke in Europe because Europe is from... <laughs> no, it's not the devil. I wasn't. I don't even mean that. They have Coke Zero and well, other Diet Cokes. Coke uses aspartame. It's the best, and aspartame is illegal in Europe because oh. they actually want their people to not be um, obese monsters. All right. Well, I love Diet Coke. It's the best drink ever. Somebody said you got a tan. Yeah. Well, I was in the sun a lot, so we had a good time. Um, okay. So all of the big churches in France are owned by the state. Yeah, you told me the story. You should tell it on the show. It's kind of depressing in one way, obviously. But uh, on the other hand, the church doesn't have the funds to maintain these gorgeous churches. But I think the the trade-off is while the Catholic Church gets to main t- like exist within these properties in perpetuity, um, it, it they, they also have to agree to let these places become museums. And so you've got people walking through them. Christ is an afterthought. It's quite depressing. I actually went to Toulouse. You know when that started? I don't. Oh, probably after the revolution. The revolution, yeah. yeah. The state reclaimed them all and then they never gave them back Mm -hmm. after they killed all the priests. So in Toulouse, I got to sit in front of the remains of Thomas Aquinas, which was a really profound moment for me, obviously, and prayed for prayed for everyone there. And but um, they had like rainbow colored lights on these drop lights above the gorgeous within this Gothic church and the the shop didn't sell any kind of rosaries or anything related to Thomas Aquinas or the Dominicans. It was like opera things. Cause I guess they now host opera events. So it was kind of depressing in one way, but in another way I thought, praise God, let the state have these churches. Let us have the truth. If that means we have to go into uglier churches and maintain the truth, it's not ideal, but it's the way it has to be. Maybe, you know, um, maybe it doesn't have to be that way, but I mean, look, if the churches owned these properties again, if a church owned these properties again, we don't have the people to fill them anymore. And that goes back to, I think, was it Ralph Martin's point that we can learn more from the apostolic Christians than the medieval Christians in regards to evangelization. Yeah. Because we're evangelizing in a dead culture. And people, it's even worse than what the original Christians had because they were evangelizing in some instances pagans. We're evangelizing baptized people who've apostatized. But um, anyway. No, I think they should give them back. They stole them with murder. Is it, uh, you can look the name of this up. St. Mon Michel or something, the mountain of St. Michael, that glorious church that's almost oh, looked yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. part of the mountain itself. We went there. But again, it was, it was depressing. I thought to myself, this should be the West's Mount Athos. Athos. I'd love to reclaim it and invite religious m- monks to start up monasteries all throughout this mountain. But instead, it's just... Mont Saint-Michel. Mont Saint-Michel. I can't say things in French. I'm American. <laughs> we did that. I actually liked it. Paris is a gorgeous city. Really lovely. My gosh. Um, and I like their smoking culture in France. Now, I think because they're part of the European Union, all of their cigar boxes and cigar boxes have like dying children on them. <laughs> Yeah, this was something that Calvin was endlessly entertained by, was me, like, pulling out a pack of cigarettes and it having no pictures of, like, unhealthy lungs. Yeah, people with no legs. and Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it, the, the opposite effect uh, happened with me. I actually saw a, a hemorrhaging man on the street and thought, bloody hell, I could go for a smoke. <laughs> uh, so, jokes on the European Union. But... Even though they have those things on the cigar boxes, the, the cigar, like people smoke wherever they want, just outside of stores and, um, yeah, good Cubans, 20 bucks. So I, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Um, oh, and then I got to go to Lourdes and who should I meet? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Lourdes. Lourdes. Okay. How do you say it? Lords. Lords. Then I got to go to, <laughs> that's like, that's funny. I can't tell if that's an Australian thing or if I just screwed that word up. <laughs> Someone who's Australian can let me know. Oh, that's hilarious. Lourdes? Lourdes. 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 You say Lourdes, do you? Lourdes. Yeah. L-O-U-R-D-S. Lourdes. 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 Yes. Lourdes. Went to Lourdes, and who should I meet but Taylor Marshall? Really? I did not see that. Yeah. It's, it was wild because I've never met him in my life, and I happened to be in Lourdes slash Lourdes, and I was up having a nap because I wasn't feeling well, and Cameron, my wife, said that they just bumped into Taylor and his wife. It was like the same day they brought a, a pilgrimage or a group of people, pilgrims there that I did. So, um, 
yeah, then I was getting ready to go through the candlelight procession. I saw him, went up and said g'day. He was perfectly congenial, lovely. I enjoyed my chat with him. You know, you shouldn't have taken that picture, Matt. <laughs> oh, tsk, yeah. Tsk, tsk. Yeah, so then what, what tsk, happened? Tsk, tsk. Kennedy Hall. So I, I was tweeted flying it. back during this. So I tweeted saga. it. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, the Pints Twitter account is active. Matt does not have Twitter. The Pints Twitter account is run by the Pints team, which nice. in this case reads Thursday. Um, and so I tweet this picture, right? And Kennedy replies, oh, he took a picture with someone he thinks like encourages schism. And I said, uh, apologies. Next time I will tell Matt he should get in a fist fight at a holy site rather than being entertained by a coincidental meeting. And Kennedy <laughs> replied, whatever for views. And then I went to my, my personal account and said, actually, you know what, Kennedy, the fight would have gotten more views. Thanks for the suggestion oh and gosh. helping to grow the channel. And he didn't seem to have any response to that one for some, I don't know. It, it is funny. See, I, I don't know if I'm just old or don't have the stomach for these sort of interactions on Twitter, which is partly why I'm not there, but like you're young and energetic and you love it. And you said to me, as we were going up the escalator, sorry, Kennedy, you put a quarter in, you're going to have to hear the whole song. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> we were leaving the airport and I was, yeah, we were walking up and I said, he put a quarter in me. He has to hear the whole song now. But you so. know what's funny is, like, I know we have differences, um, Taylor and I and Kennedy and these other folks, and I, I kind of feel like if we were to meet in person, not knowing each other, and listen to each other's views, we kind of move past it. We'd realize that what we have in common is so much greater than what we quibble about, you know? But I think it's something about when you have a large audience and you then say certain things that may lead people to hold certain beliefs or whatever... That's when it kind of feels awkward. But I, I mean, props to Taylor. Like, I'm sure he has opinions about me, but he was he was very kind and it was it was good to meet him and his beautiful family. Who are all very well dressed, unlike my ragamuffins. I don't think Peter had shoes on. Hi! We were like the, the Bogans majority of Lourdes. Of <laughs> Hi guys! The Bogans of Lourdes. <laughs> um uh, the majority of the time I see Peter, he doesn't have shoes on, to be <laughs> fair. You cannot control that boy. He is wild. Hey, before we go any further, we want to say a shout out to someone oh, in yes, Steubenville. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let me do... The good me... folks over at St. Joseph the Woodworker are doing College a timber frame. St. Joseph the Worker, yeah. Got that wrong. So, um, hold on, get on the right scene. You're going to want to be here for I'm this, we promise. I'm stalling right now so I can pull up our YouTube chat, um activity because i haven't been looking at it and we're saying some funny things so i'm worried that people are taking them too far oh. and i don't want to get the chat shut down oh kyle's here i don't care um <laughs> da -da -da -da. okay go thursday make it interesting before we lose everybody interesting um so um the college of saint joseph worker has two summer projects uh, two summer classes that are a couple weeks long this summer on timber framing you can come to Steubenville and do timber framing yeah, and yeah. so it's a great, if you're looking, um, especially if you're a single guy or, or a young guy with the young, uh, you know, just not, no kids yet, you could come and learn timber framing, get to try out living in Steubenville. Um, but the first one's happening right now, and it's great. Um, the second one is July 17th through August 4th. Okay. But the big deal here is recently, and this was after Jacob was on to talk about it, this is why we're talking about it again, is Jordan Finch, who is... <laughs> the Michael Jordan of timber framers. Yes. <laughs> Jacob says the LeBron James okay. of timber framing. <laughs> Depending on whose side you're on, yeah. Um, he is actually, he's a classically trained timber framer, probably the best in the United States currently. His wife is a subscriber to New Polity Magazine, and he offered to teach the second session mm -hmm. of the timber framing course for a couple weeks. So if you want to learn from literally the best living timber framer in America on how to timber frame, this is a great opportunity. Um, uh, you'll be... Oh, the second session is also building a pustinia. Come on. So it's, a, it's Russian for desert. It's a retreat house. And so the idea is that um, your active life will help support someone else's um, spiritual life. He gave us a link, I hope. Yeah, I've well, got it here. Yeah. Um, Jacob is teaching theology of work. Um, there will be free housing available. There are some spots left. Come on. Come to Steubenville. Be part of this. It sounds <laughs> awesome. And this is... I can't say that, Jacob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's cheaper than the other ones, and the reason Jacob gave is one I'll say to you later, but okay. it's cheaper than any other uh, any other class like this. It's a third of the price, literally, than any other comparable class. 
and Jordan Finch isn't teaching those classes. So ah, thanks, Jacob. You guys should come to Steubenville. The, uh, we'll put link a link is, in the description. Yeah, but yeah, what is it? Steubenvilleworkshop.com slash timber-framing-course. And I'll put the, the link in the description. It's the best time in the world to be in Steubenville. It is. Summer in Steubenville is yeah. so much fun. Summer and, and autumn. Oh, I, it's so... Yeah. It's, Winter is Mordor. But uh, one spring, spring to fall, yeah, nine Shire. months of the year. Oh, it's beautiful. Nine it's amazing. Months? There's no way. Yeah, I think don't there's only three people. months. Don't that are lie bad. to people. We've got a solid six months of good weather. I'd say. Oh, I don't have a problem with spring. I think maybe I like spring, but I think by the time spring gets here, I'm so exhausted by the gray and the gloom and the drizzle that I can't deal with the arm wrestle between spring and winter. Oh, I really enjoy. It. I think we have nine months of good weather, but. All right. So there you go, guys. So I'll put the link in the description if you're interested, steubenvilleworkshop.com. Now, something else I just put out yesterday um, or the other day is I put out this brand new Catholic Lo-Fi album over at Catholic Lo-Fi. So if you go to Catholic Lo-Fi on YouTube, you can find it. It's called This Sacred Heart, and it's a brand new album of lo-fi music mixed with Gregorian chant. And I think it's already up like 20,000 views. I've just given it to Spotify, Apple, etc. So it should be up there within a week or two. But thanks to everybody who supports us over there. We also have a new merch store, CatholicLoFi.org. So if you go over there, you can buy all sorts of things. Really? Yeah. I I didn't know that. Yeah, that's where I put the uh, Reclaim the Month tease. <laughs> Something also, if everybody, we, well, we'll talk about that later. We don't have any pints merch anymore, do we? Uh, we do. So when people become local supporters, they get the pint stone sent to them if they're an annual supporter. But yeah. Uh, what else should we talk about? Did you see that crazy thing? It happened while you were gone. So I bet you missed it because it was in the news for like a day and then everybody forgot about it because the mainstream didn't want to talk about it. Um, some guy in. Hello? Some guy, I think it was in, I don't remember what state it was in. I can Google it real quick. But um, the this guy, there was a pride parade and this guy was standing by the pride parade with a megaphone reading Bible verses. So not like, not like um, what, what they're called, the people with the God hates fat, um, yeah. the God hates. Yeah. Yeah. Not those people. I didn't say the word YouTube. I stopped yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not those people. No, and God hates their stupid signs anyway. Yeah, yeah, so true. Anyway, not that, not those guys, like not the crazy guy. He's literally just standing there with a megaphone reading Bible verses, right? Yeah. And not like telling them they're going to, Kyle, I'm, Kyle's saying we're demonetized. Um, <laughs> and what happened to him? Was this in he Pennsylvania? He was arrested. You said? Yes, it was in Pennsylvania. That's right. He was arrested um, for disorderly conduct and disturbing the peace. Mm. But the whole thing is filmed. And uh, oh, what was he disturbing the peace? I mean, if you've got a megaphone and you're yelling out scripture verses that are probably very condemning of the people who are there, they weren't even like. I'm not were, saying he was they were wrong not to condemning do it, but ones. I can they see were just how like, that would be disturbing the peace. Yeah, so he got arrested for protesting a pride parade. That reminds me of I was reading this this morning with my local supporters on our morning coffee podcast, Acts two forty, uh, Saint Peter. After right after Pentecost says, save yourselves from this wicked generation. Yeah. And in order to save yourself from this wicked generation, you have to first acknowledge that There's we wickedness, live amidst yeah. a wicked generation. Exactly. Preach it. Go. Uh, yeah. You gotta, we, we gotta realize that. And then we have to keep ourselves unstained from the world. I think, you know, when it, we talk about the world, the flesh and the devil, I think a lot of practicing Catholics get that the devil exists and tries to tempt us. We get the flesh bit, our disordered passions and desires, concupiscence, etc. But the world, like we're supposed to keep ourselves unsullied by the world. And it seems to me, and I think we just got to get way more hardcore about this, that we really should not be ingesting entertainment that's promoting evil. I was on a plane coming home from France the other day and these two women were watching Wedding Crashes. Now, I haven't seen that movie and I, I wouldn't watch that movie. I thought you said they were watching Real Housewives. That as well. Oh. She watched that, then she moved over to this. And But it's like, it's such an, it's an evil show, right? Because it promotes fornication and it shows sexual acts. It's despicable. But I think Christians for so long have tried to cozy up to the world. We've tried to impress the world. We've tried to show that we're not a threat to the world, but we are supposed to be a threat to the world. 
Um, and we should reject these things. I can't tell you how many Christians have said, said to me, oh, you should check out this show. And I'll start watching the show and there's fornication or there's sodomy stuff or there's yeah, just can a I gratuitous actually... violence. And you think, no, brothers and sisters, like we have to be different. This is not okay. Can I call out this show? Sure. Maybe, really, maybe maybe refer to it as a bishop so we don't. Yeah. So there is this show on Peacock that has a really interesting and actually if the if the storytellers were better, would actually be a very good story. What, what's be it called? Mrs. Remember? Davis. Okay. And so the premise of the show is that it's this nun. Um, well, there's a AI that talks to people through a single earbud. So everybody's always wearing a single earbud and they're being told what to do by Mrs. Davis at all times. Okay. Um, and it's using just like giving them virtual wings. So basically, literally just giving them like Twitter verification or like just little like not, nothing in real life, right? Yeah. And everybody's convinced to follow it. Um, and everybody's personified it. They call it her. Mm -hmm. In Italy, it's literally called Madonna. Mm. In in the UK, it's called Mum. So it's it's very much like they they are making a point. These seculars are making a point that this thing is like like a a, a you know a, a high saint of these people, and it's stealing the place of Mary in the show. And the premise is that it tells this nun to go find the Holy Grail, and so she's off on a quest to find the Holy Grail because. The algorithm promises to shut itself down if she finds the Holy Grail. And it's super cool. And there's actually some great metaphors for prayer mm -hmm. in it where like she talks to Jesus and and he asks her to do things and she's mad about it, but she obeys. Um and then she she does it in a way that is just like as as like close to the line of obedience as you can get. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up working anyway. Did and you watch the whole thing? Or? I watched most of it. Okay. Because so, I, I understand that, I, I understand, I think you're right about violence, but the violence didn't turn me off. Okay. And so I thought it was really good. And then um, the problem becomes that the nun is married to Jesus. Meaning? And, like she's literally married to Jesus. And she goes into like his restaurant and talks to him uh -huh. and he gives her tasks to do. Um, And they never show it, but it is insinuated that this marriage is... um. Yeah, being carnally consummated. Being carnally consummated, and then Jesus gives her permission to sleep with her ex because he has multiple wives, so she should be allowed to have multiple You're relationships. Kidding. No, See, this is despicable. And a bishop had endorsed this show as having quote weird theology, but not he didn't think it was problematic enough that Catholics shouldn't watch it, and he thought the story yeah. was good. And this is a wow. real. This is all in this show. And at the end, it turns out that the Holy Grail. Sorry, I'm I'm spoiling the show, and I don't no, care. Do you it. shouldn't yeah. be watching this show because <laughs> I looked it up. Because It'll I got far enough time. in, I got far enough in that the mystery for me was it was like gonna annoy me if I didn't know how it ended. Mm -hmm. Turns out the Holy Grail is a piece is like the top of Jesus's skull, and that the reason he's in the restaurant is because he can't die. He's in limbo because Mary selfishly wanted a piece of him after he died, hmm. and so she kept a piece of him and she needs it to be destroyed so that he can die yeah it's tough i so could yes, someone mentioned that and we cameron and i my wife not batuzi watched it but like 20 minutes in i'm like let's turn it off let's just turn it off like there are so many more beautiful things we could be doing and obviously you can you can acknowledge some clever storytelling or acting to 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 say that something ought not to be watched isn't to say that there aren't good elements to it or that it's not cleverly made or something but yeah it, it just seems to me that uh let there not be a hint of purity uh, uh impurity among you and again i think christians are so afraid to be considered frigid and prudish and sensorial that we just ingest a bunch of poison to tell the world how good it tasted so that they'll like us more that's what i'm seeing in when people respond to those reclaim the month t-shirts that we put out like Christians got really up. Some Christians got really upset about that. Yeah, I posted this image of a, a pride flag with a big cross through it, uh, gladly, and I quoted Trent Horn. Which he, image? Can you send it to me? Uh, it's on my Instagram. I, I can't drag it. I don't think. But it says the. This is from Trent Horn. I loved what he said. He said the primary meaning of these pride flags is that the behaviors and larger worldview behind them are morally acceptable, if not morally praiseworthy. This is the opposite of what the church teaches when it says in the catechism, 
and what it has to say. But it's wild. It's wild that I think Catholics are sacrificing truth on the altar of politeness. They oh, the think, X now. They flag, think yeah. that the LGBT, whatever they're called, uh, brigade is friendable. Bruce and Lund. that if we just be nice enough to them, Bruce then Lund they, has yeah. a good strategy for this. The we, LGTVs. LGTVs. What's that mean? It means what you were saying, but you don't have, you don't say it, so you don't trigger the algorithm. Oh, LGTVs. Yeah. Nice. Shout out to Ruslan. I noticed that the other day. I thought that was genius way to avoid the algorithm unnecessarily queuing into your video. But it's been beautiful to see the backlash certain companies have been getting. Uh, this was an article that I saw online. Target loses ten billion dollars in value in just ten days after they put out that stuff. Yeah. Some it's people want us to talk to about the Dodgers. Yeah, I mean, what do you want me to say? Satanic, wicked people allowed to do satanic, wicked things. Not condemned as they should have been, but why should we expect that? We live in a place worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. So I was happy to see that Bishop Barron spoke out against them. Yep, good for um, him. He, he, he I don't was... like the whole, this is offensive thing. I do. It is offensive, but I think it's like, no, this is satanic and you'll go to hell. Yeah, that's good. But because when I think, you say it's offensive, it sounds like you're putting the emphasis on your feelings. That's how people take that, I think. I think it's good to say it's offensive against virtue. Yeah. It offends virtue. It offends... Yeah. I, I guess... I guess what I mean is, at least yeah, in the world, when people say, I'm offended, or I, and then people say, I didn't mean to offend anybody, it's like we're, we're dealing in the realm of subjectivity. It is objectively offensive, and that's why I'm agreeing with you that it's something we could say that it's offensive. But I do think to say, no, this was deeply evil, and these people ought to repent because hell is eternal. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was the it was yeah it was <clears throat> satanic. Um, that's why I was happy to see this article that came out yesterday. <laughs> Middle school is accused of homophobia after chanting "USA," tearing down pride decorations. That's awesome. It is awesome. I think these people who are calling these kids homophobic, I think these people are homophobic phobic. The homophobia phobic. They're, they're just afraid of people. They're who just are afraid homophiles. Of... Files? Yeah. The opposite of phobia to love. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. But it's good to see. I think there is this reaction starting. I see that in young people that my kids hang out with. They're just so disgusted by the whole thing. Yeah. But, praise God, I'd say in the next month, I'll be interviewing a couple of people who live with same-sex attraction. Next week, we're going to have a lady on the show to talk about that. And um, at the end of the month, we'll have someone else as well, I think. Praise God, like, these are beautiful, holy, courageous people. Um, and I know that there's a lot of people who listen to our show who struggle with this stuff. Maybe not a lot, but I've definitely heard from them. Yeah, here's a question. I saw a couple people commenting on the um, Calvin Robinson Thursday loves the yeah loves the cigs um, <laughs> loves the fugs. <laughs> you got remember that that was the best reaction. I heard Thursday loves the fags, and then both of us go oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, fags somebody, is an American slash English word for cigarettes. Yeah, Australian English word for cigarettes. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, someone said what. So I saw a couple of people commenting that they thought the the humor was alienating to people with SSA. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You think about? Do you think I, that that's I, like I an don't. oversensitivity? Do you think that like? I don't know. It's like uh, I I can't be bothered. I can't no. be bothered dealing with people's being overly sensitive. So I do think they're being overly sensitive on this. Like I posted something the other day with that cross with the rainbow flag. Yeah. And someone said like, as someone who is gay, I find this deeply offensive. And I nearly wrote back, I don't care. Because how many times do we have to reiterate to people, you are a beautiful person created in the image and likeness of God. These actions are deeply disordered. It's not like they don't understand that. They just don't want to understand us. It's, it's, well, let me say that again. It's not like they're incapable of understanding it. I think many people are just choosing to misunderstand it. It feels like for 20 years the Catholic Church has said, all of us are in this together. All of us deal with sexual brokenness. But every time I condemn pornography... Am I required to say, but the people who are watching it, like, yeah, you love... These people have no problem when we go on mocking men who are too weak, you know, who, like, sit in their basement, you know, with their computer, yeah. dating their laptop. And I think, hopefully, is and because it's implicitly understood that, like, we love that person. That's why we don't yes, want them engaging in this poison. But we're mocking poison. the sin, yeah. yeah. 
And so when we use a word that clearly has other meanings yeah. for the guy who said the word and like, we're just laughing that it means something else yeah. in America. Like that's not us mocking them. That's just, yeah. And I'm just tired. And if anybody was the butt the of the joke there, it was, it was me <laughs> and I was fine with it, you know? Yeah. I think, yeah. And then, so this is funny. It is. So this, I posted that thing on Instagram, middle yeah, school yeah, yeah. is accused of homophobia after chanting USA, tearing down pride decorations. And someone wrote, so you're in favor of vandalism now. <laughs> that was their takeaway. I said, yes, 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 I am in this instance. In this instance. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not condone any illegal activities. <laughs> How long do you think we're going to be on YouTube for? Well, if you keep letting me say that stuff, then I can make it last a lot longer. Okay. If I keep getting to like give legal disclaimers. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked if Pints with Aquinas is a reference to Thomas Aquinas. Well, welcome to the channel. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the chat now for yeah. content for content because we've kind of like hit the point where there's not. I want to see this. I want to see if I can find this article on what these middle schoolers, because I never thought I would say middle school kids are awesome. Kyle says, error has no rights. That's based, Kyle. I love you. Um, Here it is. Okay. So I just want to read, read it. Yeah. Middle schools in Massachusetts were accused of intolerance and homophobia after they reportedly revolted against a pride <laughs> celebration at the school. They're revolted? And were they trying to make them sound awesome? What's that? Revolted? Are they trying to make those kids sound awesome? That's amazing. <laughs> Listen to this. And they chanted that their pronouns were USA. <laughs> Some students at Marshall Simmons Middle School in Burlington were accused of organizing a protest against school approved Spirit Day celebrating Pride Month, which encouraged students to wear rainbow colors earlier this month. The event was led by the Spectrum Club, an LGBT, LGTV thanks, club for students and allies. In response, some students reportedly wore only red, white, and blue colored clothing and chanted, USA are my pronouns, and took down LGBT-themed banners and stickers. That's incredible. That's awesome. This isn't a very lefty state. Massachusetts? Isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty lefty. And these are middle schoolers. These There's parts kids, of Massachusetts man. that are out in the sticks. Um, but then I heard are... that Starbucks had ordered that some gay stuff get taken down. Is that McCloskey how just said, error has no rights, but Kyle shouldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from The Guardian. Starbucks pride decorations removed because of new policy, US workers say. So I haven't looked into that, but it's kind of cool. Awesome. Uh, somebody, people keep asking what happened to your hair. And you know what? Matt has a great reason for why his hair looks that way. And I yeah, think it I'll, looks amazing. Well, I'll tell you what happened to my hair. So when I got married to this beautiful woman called Cameron, I used to have curly hair. And then I went through a phase where I just cut it short and like brushed it back. And then she's like, I like your hair when it's curly. And since I like my wife, um, I'm listening to her. We'll see for how long. And I'm just kind of going to grow it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I figure if I can tell her I like your hair long, she can say that to me. Fair enough. Not as long as she has it. Hey, I'm, I'm getting a dog tomorrow. I know. My wife is not going to watch this show, I hope, because it's a surprise. My wife doesn't know and the kids don't know. Liam Liam knows. definitely knows. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> hold on, your son was the one who told me. <laughs> so we had a big, you should look up this dog and put it on the screen yeah, yeah, to yeah, show I got people. you, I got you. I had a dog, Black Russian Terrier, whose name was Pushkin, and he's he was so beautiful. And... Um, he just died a couple of months ago. He had cancer everywhere. We had to put him down and that was sad and we loved him so much and he was just terrific. And so we wanted to get another dog and we were looking at different kinds of dogs and we just, we're just so in love with black Russian terriers. So we looked up. Fi did, you, did you find the big one? I mean, they're huge. Yeah, I found a big, big one. Well, you can't really tell you in type in, Let me find a different one. If you type in black Russian terrier, Cameron Frad or Cameron Frad's dog, there's one of her with the dog that's insane. But he was so beautiful. But this time I wanted to get a black Russian terrier bitch. My dad would always say bitch. We are so demonetized. My dad would always say bitch when referring to female dogs. He'd be like, yeah, she's a bitch. And whenever you'd be you like, guys... dad, he'd always go, well, that's what they're called. And I'm going to unashamedly say... <laughs> ask for super chats to fund this video since we have lost all <clears throat> chance of YouTube monetizing it. No, a bitch is a female dog. But so I'd say to my dad, Dad. And he'd be like, that's what they're called. And I'd say, I know that, but that's not why you're saying it. You're saying it to be abrasive. 
So we got a bitch this time because I, when you rub a dog's belly, you don't want to hit stuff. Well, you're going to hit nipples now. Nipples are okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please super chat. We're so screwed. <laughs> Nipples are okay. Uh, you can hit nipples, but you can't hit meat and potatoes. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't Twig and berries. Twig and berries. You know what I mean? Because I think we all like to think of our dogs as basically animate teddy bears. And when you're scratching it and you hit the twig and berries, you're very well aware that this is a red-blooded animal <laughs> that has its There's own needs. There's a terrier. It's very large. <laughs> all right. Anyway. So I, Kyle so, said fifty dollars. The dog <laughs> must be named Piss Fingers, or we will revolt. <laughs> so we already have a name for the dog. It's Piss Fingers. <laughs> so I, I bought this dog. I to, so I told my wife we were going to get it, and she's like the idea. She agreed, and then, um, but she doesn't know that I've bought it. And it's tomorrow morning, it'll be at the airport at six in the morning. So Liam and I are going to go pick her up. And her name is Zelly. Yeah, Liam told me he's going to call it Zelda. And I told him that he should not replace a saint name with a name from a, a weeb video game. That's fair, but I probably shouldn't be naming a female dog after a female saint either. But Zelly, like we were just there in Lisieux. We we're at the crypt of Zelly and Louis or Luis or whatever his How name is. How old's the dog? Like a month or two. Oh, wow. Yeah, so she's a pup. I can't oh, wait to get her. Your month-old dog is probably going to be the size of my 12-year-old dog. <laughs> Possibly. Here, let me I'll, let me send it to you. I'll text it oh, to you. Oh, I should send put a picture of my dog on screen just so that everybody do understands it. how I'm cute my dog is. I'm also going to slack you a yeah, photo yeah, 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 of yeah, the yeah, real yeah. dog. Yeah, yeah, do that. And I want you to put it up for people. So I'm going to slack it to me. And I'm going to slack to you <clears> as well. <throat> Select more photos. Where Somebody are Somebody in the chat say something funny that I can read while I do this. So Did you find the image of my big dog with Cameron? No, I Okay, I'm going to send it. you that as well. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, boom, boom. All right, done. Sending. Where is it? Oh, come on, you rascal. Oh, wait, we should stop. We, we will get copyright claimed. Why? Oh, what, just from doing that? Yeah. All right, so that's a photo. <laughs> Of my big dog. Now, where is. Sorry, guys. Stay with us. I promise the dog is worth it. Yeah. Okay, here's. Here you go. I found a picture of my dog when he was a month old, too. Why can't I find my dog? So my, there's no way my wife will watch this. So she's flying home tomorrow night with the three younger kids. They stayed in France for a little bit longer. So they're going to come said home. They prefer and we're cats. Have... Thank you for your super chat, but that's the wrong opinion. Yep. Um, IFB Latin Rosary guy here. Tips for finding reverent church that will still be comfortable for fam. Also love the hair. Oh, Thank just, you, Michael Bochamp. Just go and uh, check out different churches. I don't know. Or like ask more traditionally minded people. You don't need me for that. Where is this? Okay, I'm going to text it to you because I don't know how to slack it to you. Just but I slack did... it to you. I know. I can't do that for some reason. It's but a direct message. It's hard to explain right now, Thursday. Just take my word for it, okay? All right, all right, all right, all right. But I right, did right, send right. you the big dog. Oh, one. no, you slacked it to, yeah. The big one, not the big little dog. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, and then I texted you the little one. If you can find a way to put that little zelly up, that'd be great. So here's Cameron and your old dog. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. My wife's not a short woman. No, she's taller than <clears> She's like us. eight foot. Yeah, she's eight foot tall. Eight unironic. foot tall. Um... Okay, let me send this So that's picture. my beautiful dog, Pushkin. That's Pushkin. I'm going to send this one to me. There's a Ukrainian word for bitch that we were going to use. <laughs> so you were going to name your dog the Ukrainian yeah. word for bitch? Yeah. But Did you tell Father Jason that? No, not yet. I was that's with him last really night. That's really funny. Zelly! All right. Zelly, here's, Zelly! Here's a picture of my dog. I should send this. Yeah, I slacked it to you. Your Pull dog's your... lovely. All right. You want to? No, I slacked it to you. I found a picture of him when he was a month old. Your dog? Yeah. All right. I'm looking. This is I'm my looking, dog I'm when looking. he was a month old, twelve years ago. You slacked it. To, I sent it to you. To from from I sent from it to you. me from. <laughs> sent it to you from. Me. Oh, I see. Oh. Yes, yeah, so that's my dog when he was a month old, twelve years ago. So pretty. Yeah, and then here's my dog. What he looks like today. 
He is gorgeous. Do- Dogs is are Levi. pretty great. He's my friend. I love him very much. Levi is a friend of mine. Did you get the black Russian? Yeah, here's the, here's the, uh, here's the current one you're buying. So Zelly. Zelly. Already bought. All right. We got a bunch of super chats. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Viewer activities. Scroll up to the top here. Kyle said, yes. <laughs> The dog must be named Piss Fingers or we will revolt. Kyle, mm-hmm. prepare the revolt. I will help you. Um, Anatomy with Matt from Explore Nothing and Everything. Thank you for the $5. Jonah Pease, $2. No note. Thank you. Uh, $5 from Tommy Gliston. Sorry to hear about your dog. I like other people's dogs, but I prefer cats. Thanks for all you do. Lifetime goals for me to visit your cigar shop. You should come visit the cigar shop, but that is the wrong opinion on dogs and cats. Thank you for the $5. <laughs> Uh, Michael asked about the rosary and finding a good church. What would you what would you say? So he wants to know where to get a good rosary from? No. Um he's a IFB Latin rosary guy. What what does that mean? Chat Independent please, someone... Fundamentalist Baptist. I think what he means by that he wants a real traditional rosary, maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. But check out um Catholicwoodworker.com. They've got some great rosaries cool. handmade here in the States. Uh Matt Fred, if I want to ask you to review the works of someone that I disagree with from a Catholic perspective, but would find your opinion along with Trent, how would I go about doing that? I, I wouldn't do it for you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the $10, Patricia. Uh, Sydney for $20. Hey, Matt. My friend Lewis is in Steubenville with nice. the Catholic Heart Work Camp. He's a huge fan. They're at the AIM Women's Center. They're doing some work there until 3 p.m. Would love to see you stop by if possible. Well, how about this? I won't stop by there, but let's see. About three o'clock, I'll pop over to the cigar lounge for a half hour. How about that? I'll give you a half hour window. Let your friend know if he wants to come and visit. I'd love to meet him. Cool. All right. That's gonna, all I'm the chance. I'm going to be committed to that now. Yeah. You'll forget. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Matt, do you still pray the rosary as a Byzantine? Yeah, I love the rosary. I don't pray it daily, but it, I love praying it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I hope people have. Has everyone been enjoying the James McCann phone calls that we've been putting people up? People have been really liking them. So just so you know, if here's a plug: become a local supporter, mattfrad.locals.com, because we put exclusive phone calls over there that we're not putting up on YouTube, mattfrad.locals.com. But he's got a couple more that he's working on. He told me he was going to call the LA Dodgers and talk to them. <laughs> I suggested that. Did he come you up with that on his own? No, no, that not? was your suggestion. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Did you stop the stream? What nope. Happened? I just accidentally, I pushed the wrong keyboard shortcut and it went to the stream starting soon for like two seconds. All right. We're back. Um, yeah. Bud Light is not the number one selling beer. Cool. <laughs> okay. Matt McClowski nice. says, what? Matt Fred is coming to, the, to my cigar lounge? Matt's That's the so general true. manager of the cigar lounge. Thanks for being here, Matt. Good to see you working hard. <laughs> Watching my stream. <laughs> He does this every day. Uh, oh, yeah, this is really interesting, Matt. I guarantee you haven't heard this story. So I will tell you this story and watch your reaction live. All right. So the um, the there's this big streamer. His name is Nick Merckx, and he plays... Yeah, what happened? Did the stream die? People are saying it's dead. No, it's not. Is it? Oh, shoot. <laughs> no, wait, it's not. No, we're good. <laughs> It's fine. Everyone, It. I pushed the wrong button. We're back. It's the haircut. You guys need to all chill. Stop being weird. It's fine. People don't understand how sassy you are. They'll say things in the comments like, uh, excuse me, this music's way too loud. And you'll write back, I'm going to keep doing it then. <laughs> no, that the. so I did lower the volume of the music, although we could talk about this. I, I am correct about the volume of the music. It's not my fault. You all listen to... <laughs> videos on $20 headphones that you bought from Walmart and everything sounds awful on them. Um, anyway, uh, no, what I said was some guy said no more music and I said, fine, I'm going to add it to all of the videos now. Um, hey, yeah, did you have so, any- so the, the, the call of duty thing. So there was this guy, his name's Nick Merckx. He's a call of duty streamer. Um, and there was a big LGBT pride thing. Um, and he replied to some tweet, they should leave the little children alone. 
Yeah. And so Call of Duty Activision removed his, he had a custom skin in the store. Gosh. Like his, he's a streamer. He doesn't work for the company. That's how popular he is. He has a, he has a skin in the game that is him. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And they took it out. Wow. And so Tolerant. he stopped playing. Yeah. And then, um, so people started boycotting them for taking out his skin. Awesome. And then he, the other major streamer that also has a skin in the game is named Tim. Skin the, in the game. Very skin in good. the game. Has, his name is Tim the Tatman. And he call, he tweeted publicly at Call of Duty, we got our skins together. We both worked hard for this. We got them at the same time. If you're taking Nick's out, you need to take mine out. What? And so now no major streamer is playing their game. Oh. And this their two beautiful. largest like personalities have yeah. are out of their game and That's like are literally doing anything but playing their game. And they were making their living playing this game and they're refusing to play it now. Oh my goodness. Does this give you hope that we actually have more power than we thought? I think that when people when they start going for kids, it's it's becoming a thing that people are like because even like most people aren't, uh, uh, I'm going to say this, some people are going to be like, oh, this sounds condescending. Most people are not intelligent enough to realize that when you allow any of the LGBT crap, you're allowing all of it, so yeah. you are allowing them to come for kids. But now that they're getting to the point where they're explicitly coming for kids, people are more like, well, we can draw the line here. They don't realize that they can't, but they want to draw the line there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, um, well, a lot of people still play COD. Well, if you do, you're gay. Um uh, so they want to draw the line there and they want to be and they're very upset that people are coming for kids. And so even like normal people who say like, oh, let two guys get married, let, you know, let, you know, two women get married, let somebody have a sex change if they want to. Like when they start saying like, let children take hormones, they're like, whoa, 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 time yeah. out. Like huh? this is the, I'm nice drawing the line some people here. Are willing to draw the line. And so I think, I don't know if we have more power than we, we do when we, than we thought we did, but yeah. I think what we actually have is a point here where the the ideology is so extreme and they moved too quickly they made a miscalculation by moving yeah. this quickly with it yeah. that they didn't they didn't indoctrinate people to it slow enough and so people are noticing suddenly that it's, it's really extreme difficult to indoctrinate people slowly into what if we cut your son's twig and berries off yeah Seamus Coughlin we make their money worthless and then we cut off their son's penis <laughs> <laughs> you remember that one I don't the, uh, it was Seamus's, uh, like he did one with the Democrats' uh, election strategy for 2022. <laughs> <laughs> we make their money worthless? Yeah. Somebody said, oh, it was Mike. Mike for $2 says, Thursday is so sassy. That's accurate. I play video games with Mike. He knows it. Um, Someone just said, Matt, can you share about your wristwatch? <laughs> Type, why you picked it up, etc. Totally unimportant. Just being curious for a long time. So I got a couple of wristwatches. This yeah. one is HP. It's made in France. It's a Himalaya. I can't see it because the, cause the uh, I got it from Les Yeux. Les Yeux. Does that help? I normally wear a um, $10 Walmart watch. Yeah, it's good to see. I tell you, I, I, I know you kind of maybe consider yourself part of this group. And I know that there's probably something to be said about it. But when people carte blanche <laughs> crap on daily wire and criticize them without any nuance i just want to say to them you are not as cool as you think you are well i have nuance in da my criticism yeah I, whatever that's fine but when i see people blasting that stuff out these guys are part of the reason public opinion is a, is changing in america yeah. around this issue a hundred percent yeah so when people try to be cool and they got like five followers and haven't influenced anything and then criticize unapologetically Daily Wire as a whole and say something sassy to look cool in front of their YouTube friends. I always think it's just, it's like someone who gets into a band and then the band becomes popular and then they hate the band to, to be cool, but not realizing not, yeah, that they're not if, that cool. Yeah, if you when hate doing the that. band to hate the, if you hate a band to hate the band because they're suddenly popular, that's one thing. But I listen, I like a lot of bands, older stuff, but when they got popular, the music noticeably changed. Yeah. Like Blink's. Blink's newer <laughs> to, stuff. It always comes back to Blink. Blink's newer stuff. Mumford and Sons newer stuff is not good. I'm just gonna say it. Is Mumford it? and Sons newer stuff is not as good as like uh as good as Little Lion Man okay. and I'll tell you what song is the best song in the world. This beats anything Beethoven put out back in the day. If you play this Jack Black song. No, here I'm it is. I'm, the I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna play you the best song ever written. To be clean, but not 
<laughs> Every time I do it makes me laugh. Did you just play the stream? Eyes <laughs> get so red. And what the hell is on Joey's head? This is where I grew up. It's such a great song. It I is good. I love it's singing that song. song with mates. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah. But Nickelback, that's a, that's an example of it, it's an interesting story about how they became the most hated rock band or hated band. But yeah, I don't know how they did that. Mm -hmm. Accidentally, probably. Uh, na, na, na. Happy month of the Sacred Heart. Keep fighting Amen. the good fight. Thank you, Chris, for the five dollars. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, I want to let people know that I'm going to be interviewing Jim Caviezel soon, and oh, it's yeah. about his new show on sex trafficking, uh, which I've been told is very hard to watch. They gave me a link to watch it. We can watch it before it comes out if you want. Oh, let's do it. But that interview with Jim Caviezel will only be available for local supporters, mattfrad.locals.com. We are preparing for the day when YouTube cancels us outright, and we want to just drive as many people over there as possible. So go sign up, mattfrad.locals.com. You don't even have to, you do have to pay to engage with some of the content, like this interview with Jim Caviezel. But every morning, most mornings, I do a live stream called Morning Coffee, where we just sit and chat. And you don't actually have to pay to watch that. You just have to sign up like you'd have to sign up on Facebook or Twitter. So mattfrad.locals.com. Kyle gave us 20 more dollars and said, RIP to any chance this stream had in being monetized. Unacceptable language, unlicensed music. We have it all today. <laughs> So is um, thank you, Kyle. Is Kyle's news public? No, Kyle, I you can not. let us know. Kyle, the the thing you texted me last night about, um, yeah. If you want, we can announce that. Um, somebody gave us two dollars and said, <laughs> "May I use audio from an interview for a pints animated?" Um, yeah, of course. I'm okay. Uh, no, I'm unsure what you mean by that, or. I'm not familiar with your work, so I would want to see. So if you could send me. Um, you going to throw out your email? No. I think if it's like fair use, go for it. Yeah, I don't want to be one of those people who's like super stingy with copyright. Please be respectful and we won't, you know, we'll, we'll say it's fair use. You know what song I love? Here's a song I love. Do you know Faith No More? No. Uh, Logan gave $10 only because <coughs> Matt sang Nickelback. Oh. This song, thank you. <coughs> Easy. Come on. You know this song? Here we go. I know it sounds funny, but I just... You, you heard missed song? the cue. Hang on. Sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Kyle said... Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. That's a great song. I don't um, know if they didn't write that, did they? Who wrote that song? Kyle said, we're trying to move, but nothing is certain until sales and purchases are Ooh, made. More people. Oh, Lionel Richie, I think, wrote the song. Okay. Um, well, there you go. More people are moving to Steubenville. Yeah. I, there was a couple on our cruise who, <laughs> for most of the dinner, I was trying to convince them to move to Steubenville. Because I think the two reasons, the two legitimate reasons not to move to Steubenville are... You live in a place that has great weather or you have to live in a place because of your work or yeah. you have great community where you are. But these people live in New York state. They don't have great weather. They said, and he can work from wherever. I'm like, then there's no, and he doesn't, I don't think they had great community. So move to Steubenville. All right. I want to hear this Lionel Richie one. This hit, as you said. We're so getting claimed. The stream's just going to be shut off at this point. They're just going to delete it. Oh my gosh. That's beautiful, but the Faith No More version um, is better. My fav one of my favorite little known artists. Tell me. I'll look it up. Oh, and then I want to tell people about the one of the greatest songs I've heard in a while. Um, Fulton Lee. <laughs> Fulton Lee. Fulton. Lunar Eclipse. Space L-E-E. -E. Yeah. Um, no, play... Better. Be Somebody. Solar Powered. Music. John play Cena. Love Falls Down. Love Falls Down. Yeah. All right, here Love we go. Love Falls Down. I've been all thinking about my baby. 
Oh, come on. We're the whitest people in the world who have no rhythm, but let's do it, dude. Let's do it to be racing. I want to do a shout out to our black barber, Billy, who gives us an education in like black soul music every time we get a haircut. That's Hi, so Billy. true. Yeah. What's up, Billy? <clears throat> I like that. All right, so have you heard of the Milk Carton Kids? The Milk Carton Kids? They have a song kids? called I Michigan. Not. It is so lovely. I heard this playing at the coffee shop a year ago, and I tried typing the words into YouTube to find the song. I had no idea what it was or where it came from. Couldn't find it. A year later, I hear it, and I told the barista, tell me who this is. This is them. It's... I don't remember hearing a song... For a long time, like maybe 10 years, and, and thinking, this is a beautiful, beautiful song. I was so moved by it. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you just want to have three beers and cry? Do we get haircuts together? No, we're not gay. We just go to the same guy. Move, move over Pontiac skies. Great song. Mikulowski just said we should play Ohio is for lovers. All right. <laughs> Ohio. Please don't. Is for, what is that? What does that mean when people say that? I've heard that song. But when people say something is for lovers, what is that referring to? Is that? I mean, you know. Here it is. He'll go straight in the middle. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. I love it. I love it. The last four days, I've been going for a run in the mornings, and I've been listening to Mm-hmm by Reliant K. Uh, the best. They're the best. They are high so, of 75. Yeah. Are they Are they as underrated as I suspect they are? No. People of my generation love them. Because Which is it interesting. Was like our middle school music. Yeah. Yeah, because they would have been finishing by the time you got into them. Um, are they still around? I mean, I listened to them in middle school, so I, I was into them when they were still popular. Do um, bands break up anymore? It feels like they don't break up. They I mean, just keep kind of, they break 80. up and then they like, um, Reliant K. Okay. So they still, I so hate consequences. I so hate. Gotta get away. Why are 700 okay, people watching this? Okay, September 9th, they're playing in Cincinnati, Ohio. All right. So it's Matt called Fratt Is for I Lovers Festival. Isn't that funny? It is Reliant actually cool. K? Yeah. Is for Lovers Festival. Reliant K? Yeah. All right, Matt, Fred, and I will be in Cincinnati September 9th. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. That's Mary's birthday, isn't it? I obviously know that. What feast day is Mary's birthday? It's, it's, it's September 8th. September 8th, well done. Yep. Um, good. Well, Thursday is as good as emo got. What? Thursday is as good as emo got. Somebody said, put on Enoch. No, we're listening to good music. What's Enoch? <laughs> that was great. Somebody clip that right now. Somebody clip it right now. He's a Catholic rapper who's like... Okay. Uh, Why do you mean clip it? Is that embarrassing to ask that? No, it's embarrassing to him that I went, we listen to good music and then... Oh, don't say that. I'm sure, he's, you very, went, who's I'm sure Enoch? he's very good. <laughs> Please don't clip that. I don't want to crap on a Catholic <laughs> artist trying to do good. Let's see. Enoch oh, Catholic That was rapper. hilarious. Is he as good as Laura Horn? He did a response to Laura's. He he responded for Taylor Marshall to Laura. Litany of the Saints. Don't oh, it's not. you don't like him. No, he looks it's good. Cringe. I love his beard. That's the most beautiful beard I've ever seen. It's good for him. I mean, it's not my bag, but. It sounds really good quality, at least. Oh, there you go. Check him out. E hyphen K N O C K. If people are interested. Um, somebody asked when my next Twitch stream is. I don't know. I didn't have as much fun last time as I thought I would. I'll do it again. If you guys <laughs> Can want. you let people know about our um that forum thing we started for people? Oh, the Discord. Yeah. Yeah, we have a Discord. It's for. Local supporters only, not locals members only, but supporters. So you have to be a supporter. Um, it's discord.gg slash pints. So how do you figure that out? Like how do you know who's who? Can they, anyone just join? I, I verify it. We oh. have a, we have a team of verifiers. Oh so they send goodness. us they send us uh, their billing. Tell page. me the URL again. 
Discord.gg slash pints. Dot GG. Yep. What does GG mean? Doesn't matter. 522 members. Is that a lot? Uh, yeah, no. it's, it's not a, it's not an insignificant amount. All right. Is there a Minecraft server yet? Oh, we did promise a Minecraft server. Um, so <clears throat> if, if the Minecraft server exists, it'll also be for local supporters only. Thursday is officially a player hater. No, I just don't think rap is good. Um, I think they're very talented though, when they can string words together like that. I think there are some rap <laughs> like songs how, that are like good, how but I don't like rappers. My take on rap is: I think it's really good when they can string words together like that. Um, I think there are some rappers that are good. I think there are some rap songs that are good. Mm -hmm. um, Name one. Rap songs that I like. Yeah. Um, the Chance song called "Whoa." Why did my camera just like lose? There it is. Uh, Chance the rappers. Um, do do. Let me find it. It's in this playlist that I've been listening to recently. Um, and I so hate consequences. consequences. Running from you is what my best defense is. Whoa! Consequences got, got to make me face up to this. And I so, uh, chances. Shoot, I can't find the song title. I forget what it is. It's um on his newer album, the one that came out in 2019. Uh, Do you remember? By chance is really good. Um, I like all of Jesus is King. I mean, some of the, some of the made a left when I should have made a right. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, I feel like we're getting to the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, we are. Thanks for being here, everybody. Click People subscribe. want the Minecraft server. Stay tuned. If you want the Minecraft server, stay tuned. We'll probably figure it out soon. Bye. Bye.